I'm Claudia Catania, and you're listening to Playing On Air. If you're here, we already know you love theater and podcasts, so from our friends at CBC Podcasts, here's a recommendation to add to your list. Play Me from CBC Podcasts is proud to present a new series, The Show Must Go On, featuring exciting productions from some of North America's most acclaimed creators for the stage. Sit back and experience everything, from chilling thrillers to gut-wrenching dramas to irreverent comedies. Each month, experience the exhilaration of the theater right from the comfort of your own home. The theaters have closed, but the show will go on. You can subscribe to Play Me on the CBC Listen app or wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, Playing On Air listeners. It's your host, Claudia Catania. We'll be back with a full season of brand new episodes this fall. But to tide you over until then, we want to share some short plays from our back catalog. Give a listen. And if you're so inclined, rate and review us on iTunes to help others discover the show. And of course, our listener survey is still live until the end of August at playingonair.org slash survey. Thanks, and thanks as always for listening. You are about to hear Anniversary by Rachel Bonds. It's directed by Lindsay Furman and features Sarah Sokolovich, Michael Esper, Sujin Kim, and Stephen Boyer. On the anniversary of your death, I decide to go to the mediocre deli on the corner for lunch. I don't want to taste any real food tastes. I don't want to enjoy the rich flavors of roasted beet salad or pan-seared tuna steak because I just want to eat gray roast beef on a plain white bun and have the whole event be a big gray blur on this long gray day. You mind if I sit here? Why? There's no other free seats. Oh, sure. So, this doesn't seem like your kind of place. Why? I don't know. You don't look like you eat a lot of crappy deli meat. Oh, well. I'm Matt. Hi, Matt. Hi. You're not going to tell me your name? Um. I told you mine. Yes, you did. You can give me a fake one. A fake name? Yeah. Okay. Debra. Hey, Deb. Debra. Debra. It's nice to meet you. You too. You've got a very firm handshake, Thanks, Debra. Thanks, so do you. <laughs> I think I've seen you before. Yeah? You live nearby, right? I think I've seen you. I don't know. You don't live nearby? I'm sorry. I just want to sit here and eat this gray roast beef and not have to talk to anyone. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I just really, really want to be left alone today. Sure. You don't have to leave. No, it's fine. I need to go anyway, so... Okay. Sorry. It was nice to meet you. Yeah. Two months after the anniversary of your death run into Matt at a party. I really didn't want to go to this party, but Caroline and Neil insisted. They've just gotten engaged. Penelope, you made it! Thank you for coming. It's so good to see you. You look fantastic. You look look really really fantastic. fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, we're finally taking the plunge. Oh, and we decided... We decided we're doing the wedding in Mexico. On the beach. While the sun is setting. And then we'll all go swimming. Wow. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be gorgeous. You have to come. come. Sounds really fun. You really look great, Penny. Put down your coat. Go have a drink. Go have some food. Please Please have have some food. food. We We got got way way too much much food. food. Okay. Have Have a good good time. time. Thank you. Two months after the anniversary of your death, I proceed to drink way too much at our friends from college engagement party. Hello. Oh, hi. (laughs) Do you remember me? From the day of the gray roast beef. Matt. Matt, right. How are you? Uh, I've had four gin tonics. Okay, so pretty good? Pretty good, yeah, on the outside. And on the inside? Oh, I'm like a huge pile of ashes and dust and rubble. You're in ruins? Yes. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, I'm used to it. I'm sorry to hear that as well. You have a very kind, very good heart. Thank you. It's in very good condition. Uh, thank you. I mean, it's in good working order, not in ruins. I see. I bet if we opened you up and took out your heart and looked at it, it would be bright red and royal blue and full of blood and blindly and happily pumping along. 
Maybe. It doesn't yet know what could become of it. Yikes. You're friends with Caroline and Neil? I work with Caroline, actually. Oh, saving the children? Uh, kind of. It's a human rights organization, so... Oh, saving everyone. <laughs> I guess so. They're getting married. I know. I knew them both before they even knew each other. Oh, yeah? Yes. It's funny to think about. <laughs> yes. The time passes and passes and passes. Yes. I asked Caroline about you. You did? She told me your name. Oh. Your real name. Oh. Penelope? Yes. That's a beautiful name. Thank you. Why are you in ruins, Penelope? Oh, no. What? I shouldn't have said that. It's all right. I don't need saving. What? I don't need saving. All right. You seem like you have the rescue complex. I don't think so. Mm, Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Don't rescue me, okay? Okay. Have you really had four gin and tonics? This is five. (laughs) I want to ask you something, but I don't know if I should. Because I'm drunk? No. You can ask me. Mm, Okay. Uh, Will you go out to dinner with me, Penelope? I don't know. Okay. Why? I have to think about it. Oh. Okay. How about... How about I'll get your number from Caroline, and then I'll call you in... How long? Eight days. Eight days. Okay. I'll get your number from Caroline, and I'll call you in eight days, and ask if you would like to go to dinner with me. Okay. Good. Here, let's shake on it. I have the spins, Matt. Uh Uh-oh. Here, wait, wait, wait. You should... Here, here, sit down. Okay. Yeah, I... I'm sorry I was rude to you that day. It's all right. Thank you, Matt, with a good heart. You're welcome. Four months and two weeks after the anniversary of your death, I sleep with Matt on the living room floor, between the couch and the coffee table. I don't tell him it's because using the furniture feels like some kind of betrayal. Hey. Hey. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Are you okay? Very. Okay. Hi. Hi. What time is it? Um... I don't know, early? I don't remember falling asleep, do you? No. (sighs) Yeah. Let's go out and eat enormous amounts of breakfast. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Don't you love getting up when it's really, really early? Sometimes. Oh, I love that feeling. It's like maybe only a couple other people in the city are up right now, and the light is strange and it feels like a great secret, right? Yeah, it reminds me of long car trips. Yeah. When I was in high school... There were these horses that my dad would take care of, but their owners lived way, way out, like two and a half hours away, and he would get up really, really early on Saturday mornings and drive out there to take care of these horses. And at some point, I don't remember why, I started going with him. So we'd get up around 4 and get in his truck around 4.30 and drive out to these people's farm. And it was always dark and cold out. And there was hardly anyone else on the road, maybe one or two other cars. And the sky was that deep navy blue that it gets in the winter. And I was always wearing this huge sweatshirt with the hood pulled up. And I would just stare out the window at all the blurry fields speeding by. And we would just drive and drive through the morning like that. But I can still feel that feeling, you know? Like I can actually feel what it felt like to be sitting there at 4.30 in the morning in the truck, in the dark, with my dad. Isn't it weird that some memories are like that? Like, it's not really an image I'm remembering. It's an entire feeling, do you know? It's like it takes over my entire body, this memory. (laughs) Are you crying? (sighs) Sorry. Are you okay? Yes. Yes. Yeah, sorry, sorry. What happened? I don't know. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Were they sick? Who, the horses? Yeah. No, no, my dad just used to give them their regular checkups. Oh. One of them had a hurt leg once, I guess. Oh, yeah. But he was okay. Yeah. You were worried about the horses? Uh, I don't know. I'm sorry. No, no, it's okay. God. <laughs> you made me homesick. I think you're very beautiful, Penelope. Oh. I do. Did, did this freak you out? Um, do you want me to, to do something differently? Or? No, no, you're great. Okay, but you were just crying. I know. Which doesn't exactly inspire confidence. It's not. Unless you're emotionally overcome by my sexual prowess. I get sad sometimes. Okay. So, I don't know. I guess, don't take it personally. Okay. 
It might be difficult. You want to just go get breakfast? Yeah. Okay, let's go get breakfast. <laughs> One month and three days before the anniversary of your death, Matt, with a good heart, takes me away to Montauk for the weekend. Let's just sleep out here tonight. Perfect. We'll just curl up on our blanket and sleep right here. <laughs> the bed and breakfast guy will not like that one bit. He looks like a fisherman from a horror movie. Yes, he is very weathered. I think he has a glass eye. <laughs> <laughs> What? No. He does. I think he does. How do you know? His left eye is very weird <laughs> and blank looking. Like there's nothing behind it. Oh, God. And if he finds out we took his blanket to the beach, he's going to hunt us down in the middle of the night. With a rusty hook. Yes. And hack into our flesh. Yes. And use us as bait. Yes. <laughs> Are you having a good time? Of course. I want you to have a good time. I am. Okay. What? I want you to be happy. I know you do. Are you? Matt. What? I'm content. Okay. But I think we have different versions of happy. I think I feel happy in moments, and then those moments pass, and then there are new moments. Well, I'm happy. Well, good. I feel pretty much in a constant state of euphoria. Really? With you, yes. Except you get that look. What look? You go very far away. Ah. Uh. And I don't think you want me to know where you go. It's not that I don't want you. It's okay. I just want you to know that I want to know where you go. And then I would go with you if you wanted. Matt with the good heart. Don't do that. What? Treat me like I'm naive. That's not what I meant. Like I've lived some untouched life or something. Well, you have. What? I mean, your parents are still married. You're good looking and everyone likes you. You're smart and your siblings are all really nice and your family's really nice and everyone's healthy and good natured and every single one of your grandparents is still alive and everything is always very nice. That's not fair, Penelope. Well... Everyone has their issues. What issues have you dealt with? Seriously? Name something hard you've had to go through. What the... Name one thing. What, what do you want me to say? Uh, my sister was bulimic for a while. My mom gets depressed sometimes. My brother smokes too much pot. Is that good? I'm just saying. This is really petty. I'm saying I've dealt... I'm still dealing with something very difficult. And sometimes I think you cannot possibly understand I'm it. I'm trying to understand it. I've tried really hard yes, to be patient. Yes, I know. But yes, it's getting to be really difficult when you spend three days in bed not talking to me. Or when you're happy one minute and then sobbing on the floor the next? Well, yeah, I'm sad. I know, I know, I know, I know. You've made that abundantly clear. Just don't accuse me. Don't blame me for not having had some horrible tragedy in my life. Okay. Sorry I'm such a screw-up. You're not a screw-up. Don't be so dramatic. I want to go home. On the anniversary of your death, I go back to the mediocre deli on the corner for lunch. I think, maybe Matt will walk in the door. He doesn't. Two months and four days after the anniversary of your death, I wait for Matt on the street outside of his office. Hi. Hey. I called you, but... I know. So I thought I could come here. Okay. And see you. Well, you see me. I miss you. Very much. Okay. Please talk to me. You came to see me. You talk to me. Okay. Um, I'm gonna try to explain this. Okay. Okay, so, okay. It's like, inside me is an enormous map. And there's one place where I have, where I put this thing that happened to me. And it's, it's Iowa. Okay? So, there are some days when I can be standing in New York and looking out, and I'll see Iowa out of the corner of my eye, and I'll know it's out there, but I'm okay. I'm standing in New York. But then there are some days when Iowa starts overflowing. It, it grows and grows and grows and washes over the entire map. And then I'm swimming through Iowa, and I can't be anywhere but Iowa. But you're standing in New York. And now... When I'm swimming in Iowa, I want to be standing with you. I'm trying to get back to you. And I think it'll get easier. And eventually, I'll just be able to stand in New York 
and simply see Iowa out there in the corner of my eye. So... So? So... I guess I'm asking you to wait for me. You can't shut down and not talk to me for days because you're in Iowa. Okay. You have to tell me what it's like there. Lots of cows. I'm serious. I know. You have to talk to me. Okay. Okay. On the anniversary of your death, Matt and I move into a third floor walk up in Windsor Terrace. The light is bright in the mornings and low and warm in the afternoons. I think we should paint this room yellow. Yes. What do you think? I like it here. (laughs) Me too. On the anniversary of your death, Matt and I fight over where to go for dinner. Just pick a place. I don't care. Well, I don't care either. Ah, fine. Thai food. I don't know. Well, then you pick a place, Penelope. On the anniversary of your death, Matt and I drink too much at a party and ride the subway home drunk. Which stop are we? Not yet. I drank too much. Me too. I love you, Penelope. I love you. On the anniversary of your death, my sister takes the train up from D.C. to help me pick out a wedding dress. We find one with covered buttons all down the back. It's beautiful. On the anniversary of your death, I cut my finger while chopping garlic and have to get three stitches. On the anniversary of your death, there is a terrible thunderstorm and a tree falls on our block. On the anniversary of your death, Matt and I order pizza and play Scrabble on the floor. We decide to go off the pill. On the anniversary of your death, I go out for a walk by myself for the first time since Eliza was born. On the anniversary of your death, she throws up all over the car on the way to visit my dad in New Hampshire. On the anniversary of your death, I'm six months and exhausted. On the anniversary of your death, we're doing math homework and packing lunches. We're worrying that she's shy. We're worrying he's unhappy. We're picking up the babysitter. We're crying in the auditorium. We're learning how to swim. We're making dinners. We're making breakfast. We're making messes. We're getting through the weeks. And at some point, a point I cannot identify, the memory of you shifts. It becomes sepia-toned and quiet. How are you doing? I'm okay. I just remembered what today is. I know. I had forgotten until a couple of hours ago when I was doing the dishes. And I was like, oh yeah. (laughs) You're okay? I'm fine. How are you? (laughs) Tired. Yeah. I tried to read Nathaniel's story. Oh. He told me he didn't need me to. It's okay, he said. I don't need it. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) I wanted to say, but I need it. Time passes and passes and passes. Yes. You just heard Anniversary by Rachel Bonds. Directed by Lindsay Furman, it featured Michael Esper as Matt, Stephen Boyer as Neil, Sue Jean Kim as Caroline, and Sarah Sokolovich as Penelope. This recording was underwritten by the Geraldine Stutz Trust. We are lucky to have Rachel Bonds, the playwright of Anniversary, right here. Hi, Rachel. Hi. So, Rachel, where are you from? I am originally from Suwannee, Tennessee, which is a tiny, tiny college town just between Chattanooga and Nashville, lower middle part of the state. Was your description of Matt in the early, early mornings with his father going to check up on horses, was (laughs) that from your imagination or... Were Tennessee mornings like that for you in any way? Uh, uh, So partly from my imagination. um, My father was not a vet. Mm -hmm. (laughs) He was a professor of classics. But we used to go on long car trips when we would visit my grandmother in Richmond, and we'd usually leave early in the morning. There's also just something really peaceful about that area where I grew up that's mostly farms and corn and, and mountain roads. There's a a very quiet quality 
that I always really loved. What do you think is important about playwriting for you? You know, I started off writing memoir and um, nonfiction. I was also acting a lot, so at some point those two things merged and I started writing plays. So, I don't know, playwriting became the only thing I wanted to do and I had lost my father during college and sort of found the only way that I could deal with that was to write, which is why I think I was writing a lot of memoir. But then as I got distance from that, I started trying to attack it in other ways, which is where the playwriting came in. Well, this play is certainly a lot about personal grief. Yeah. Um, and now that you mentioned you lost your father, yeah. do you find that the writing about personal grief releases it for you? Yeah, I... I think we're all sort of struggling to understand that we're all going to die uh, and that people we love are going to die. And it, that's just such a hard thing to accept. And it doesn't make a lot of sense. You know, it, it doesn't feel, you know, when you lose someone, it feels completely insane. And, and I think I'm always just trying to make sense of what happened and to try to understand it. And so I just keep writing and keep writing and keep writing as a way to sort of figure out what happened and why and and how to possibly move on from there. In a sense, is this play a dedication to him? I feel like every play is a dedication to him in some way. Um, and to my mom, who always told me I should write. But it's for him, but it's also about life moving on. It's really about what time does to a person. I think that's what I'm really sort of interested in, time passing and passing and passing and how grief changes over time right. or doesn't to the point where one can even forget yeah which is scary too absolutely yeah it's that moment of oh i was doing the dishes and I'm like oh yeah right life goes on yeah we've been speaking with anniversaries playwright rachel bonds thank you rachel thank you you've been listening to playing on air associate producer michelle o'brien Literary Manager, Bonnie Antosh. Theme and Play Music, Tom Cochan. Recording and Sound Design by John Kilgore. Playing on Air is distributed by PRX. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can visit us at playingonair.org, where you can discover new shorts and interviews with amazing artists. Subscribe to Playing on Air on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. And to help us share great theater with new listeners nationwide, rate and review a show. It's the best way to spread the word. For Playing on Air, I'm your host, Claudia Catania. Thanks for listening. <laughs>